The Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. Bernard Tobin here on the Corn School. Today I'm at Hogan Dorn Dairy Farm, Baden, Ontario, catching up with Lauren Weaver from 360 Yield Center. Sir, how's it going? It's going pretty good. How awesome. Hey, I, I, we better not blink or we're going to miss it. Yeah. Behind us, we have Rain 360. Now, this is what you build as, you know, adaptive irrigation, water, nutrients, manure. Tell us about this machine before it goes by. Yeah, so it's a fully autonomous irrigation machine. It has the ability to apply water, liquid manure, liquid nitrogen, any kind of nutrients, and we're gonna apply it right at the root base. So we're not, we're not spreading it over the top, we're getting it right down on the ground where, where it's gonna be able to be soaked in by the roots. Yeah. So talk about, uh, I guess, the importance of you know, being able to bring that water, that nutrient into a season uh, at, and being timely around the roots and of course, when the crop needs moisture. Yeah. Yeah, so the, the, on, a, on a very dry year, um, this thing is going to be very, even, even in a normally wetter climate in Ontario, it's going to be very useful. Um, this farm we're at right here is very sandy soil, so he was familiar with irrigation even before he started with the rain system with pivots, so he understands the importance of irrigation, and when we're able to mix in nutrients along with that while you're irrigating, it just makes it that much more valuable. Yeah. I'm gonna to talk to Case in a minute about his experience with this, but hey, let's run through some of the specs here. I mean, talk about, I guess, how much ground we can cover, you know, uh, how much capacity we have with this machine. Yeah, so the, the standard kind of acreage that we're looking for is about 160 to 200 acres if we wanna be able to irrigate and apply nutrients. Some farmers are looking only at manure application. In those cases, they're gonna do a lot more acreage, probably in the 300 to 500 acre range for each machine. So based on what you wanna do, the machine has the ability to just apply manure or you know, irrigate along with that. So we have a, the flexibility to do you know, 150 to 500 acre range based on, on, on your, um, what you want to accomplish with the machine. You got 3,000 feet of hose on this, right? And right. talk about, we're going up the field, we're coming back the field, we're doing part of the field, uh, and we're able to return without running over the same ground. Yeah, yeah, it carries 3,000 feet of hose, so it's gonna travel out and water on the outer section of the boom, and then it's gonna move back and water the center, picking that hose up and it's gonna move over 60 feet or 80 feet, depending on the size of your machine, and just work across the field. If it's a large field, we will have a backbone down the center, and we'll, we'll turn both ways off of that backbone. Travel out, watering the outside, travel back, watering the center, and just move over, move across the field that way. Yeah. Now you're moving about a half mile an hour. Talk about coverage here. Um, I mean, depending on how, how much water you want to, to, to deliver, um, you're gonna be able to cover different amounts of ground. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll cover basically 25 to 40 acres per day, depending on field shape and how much you want to put out. A long, narrow field is going to be the most efficient, less turns. Um, so we can cover about 40 acres per day on a, on a long, narrow strip. Uh, we can cover very odd shaped fields. It just won't be, the acres per day will not be quite as high. And how much water can you put down, for example? Um, how much, could, if you want to put down a half inch, how much ground can you cover in a day? The half inch is going to be about 35 acres a day. Right. Yeah. So, Lauren, let's talk about, I guess, the coverage here. You got a 60 or an 80 foot boom and, and wide drops. Correct, correct. So, the, six, the, the difference in boom sizes, we try to match up with planters as much as we can. So, a 20 foot, 30 foot, or 60 foot planter, we use a 60 foot machine. A 40 foot planter, we use an 80 foot machine. So, we catch two planter passes. And, the, the, yeah, the different style drops. The wide drop we do with the corn to drop it right at that root base, but if we're in rye, wheat, or alfalfa, we use a splash pan drop for full coverage, so we're not we're not doing just strips. Yeah. And what about uh, I guess uh, water source? Getting water to this machine, you know, you've got three machines here in Ontario, actually four. Um, how is how, how are different farms configured? How does it work? Yeah, so, so here at the Hogendorn Dairy, they had existing underground piping. Um, some of our other sites, especially for first year, as the farmers are trying to 
figure out how the machine works best on their farm. They just lay soft hose to to points um, that we can that we can cover to cover their fields. Um, but that's that's a nice way of getting started without getting into expensive um, underground plumbing. Um, but we're usually running six inch, six or eight inch piping to our riser points where we hook the machine up. Mm. Now I know you're going to be doing a lot of sort of crunching of numbers this year with these machines in the field. But what what does ROI look like? Uh, you know, what's the investment here? How what are you telling customers? It's usually a three to five year payback, um, depending on how dry the climate is, um, how much manure you're able to apply, um, you know, your your application costs for manure currently. Um, you know, we have drought years, um, for example, in Delaware this past year, we had 30 to 40 bushel dryland corn with 283 bushel irrigated corn right beside it. Mm -hmm. So those type of years really make a big difference. Um, and a lot of for a lot of our dairy farms, it's manure application cost and timely manure application yeah. when you can put it on there when it can be used, fertilizer savings, um, and and just cheaper cheaper to put on yeah. the drag line. Final thought, uh, well, you know, the, the overall fit. Obviously, we're here on a dairy farm. You know, that nutrient capacity, that manure capacity, you know, is a big tie in here. But what about uh, cash crop farms? Yeah, I think I think. Um, we start starting to see a lot of states that are limiting water usage, um, and when that comes into effect, being able to drop it below the canopy of the leaves, right at the root base, we can be much more efficient with the water. And odd-shaped fields, being able to cover all the corners, um, gives you a lot of benefits over a pivot. So that's uh, I think I think the biggest um, selling points when it comes to just irrigation. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm now catching up with Case Hogan Dorn here at the farm. Case, thanks for the invitation. No problem. Thank hey, you. Hey, let's talk about the farm. Give us a snapshot. Uh, we uh, run a dairy farm down in Baden. Uh, we're milking about 400, 430, 30, 40 cows. Um, do a lot of the field work, cropping ourselves. Everything we feed is homegrown. Yeah, the challenging is all the dry weather we've yeah. been having. So we've been irrigating for the last, since 2012, so the last, oh. I don't know, 12, 13 years. It's got a lot of sand here, right? A lot of sand. It's a sand farm, a lot of hills, a lot of challenges. Yeah. So over the last years, we've been dabbling into it. Yeah. So, so you've got irrigation, yeah. you've got pivots yeah. here, um, 2012. Pivots, um, travelers. Travelers. Um, this year you decided to bring this machine in. Why? Manure is always an issue. Since we've been doing all the fall rye, corn, so soybeans, we don't grow any alfalfa anymore. So challenging to get the manure out. Summertime, we don't have third cut, second cut anymore. So yeah. to get the manure out is becoming more challenging. Well, this machine, it it puts the manure on through the season in crop yeah. all all day long. Yeah. So you can do fertigation, shall we say. Yes, yes. You, you can yeah. irrigate. <clears throat> um, that's got to give a, be a one-two punch for you. Water. The water amount isn't as much, but the manure is for us the the... The kicker. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So talk about, I guess, the the infrastructure that you need to run a machine like this. Now you're pretty much ahead of the game with yeah. your with your commitment to irrigation. So we've been in this since, like I said, twenty twelve. Over the years we've added underground piping, wells, pumps, you name it, gen sets, generators. I think we're running ten thousand feet of underground pipe at the moment. Oh. Mm. Four four wells. So yeah, we've the infrastructure is there for so for this machine to work. All we had to do is plug it in one of the main lines, turn on the pump, and yeah. and program it a little bit. What do you like? Uh, <laughs> I'm obviously, always some things to figure out when you run a new machine like that. What do you What do you like about what you're seeing? The results, like the the corn likes it. It's it it was a startup, well not a startup issue. I mean, learning curve for everybody. Programming the corn planter, programming the machine afterwards, and then figuring out the best way to. Get the fields covered. Because yeah. you're following your corn. Following the corn planter. The right. corn planter has a GPS tower on it from 360. Yeah. So it records the, the maps, it maps the fields, and they program it, and then we do the rest. So Case's corn is moving along real well. Uh, yeah. What's the rest of the season look like with this machine? Um, you know, we've got some foliar work to do, irrigation work to do. Where is this going to fit the rest of the year? So the normal plan is two wide drop passes, 
hard to get 28% at the moment, yep. so we kind of changed the plan for that machine a little bit. We're upping the manure, try to get at least two more passes on, right. at least to get another 100, maybe 100 units in on yep. through that machine. Yep. Probably going to run it till tassel or longer. We'll see what, what works. I know you haven't gotten there yet, but you have, are you looking at the ROI? I mean, obviously, you know, the, the setup on this one, now, you probably won't know until later in the year, but, no, how, but how do you do the math? You kind of do the math on the, the water adds yield big time, the fertilizer savings for us to being able to run it over uh, five, 600 acres for manure applica application is going to be a big return. Labor, no tanks over the, down the road, no drag line, no yeah. fuel consumption. It runs three weeks of one tank of fuel. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Thousand liter tank, but three weeks. So. Any thoughts for the farmers watching, uh, you know, what you've seen so far, other than that, you know, we just talked about a lot of things. It's a big investment to start, yep. but the return's there. Great stuff. Appreciate you taking the time. Uh, how about we check back with you later in the season? Anytime. Sounds awesome. good. Thanks for having me on Corn Store. No problem. Thanks.